Hi guys, welcome to Refer UX. Myself, Nimesh, and today we are talking another important topic on the innovation management that is market entry strategies. When you are starting a business, it's really essential to understand or rather the strategies which requires to enter to the market that you are intended to plan to enter. So in this particular lecture on the innovation management, we will discuss some of the strategies that we can use to select the best entrance to the market and some of the case studies as well. So let's begin. The first obvious question that anybody would ask when we start this kind of lecture is, okay, what do you mean by the entrance strategy? Well, the strategy, of course, means a set of tactics or rather the game plan that we can follow to achieve a particular task. So when it comes to entrance strategy, it is the planned method of delivering our goods or rather services to our intended or rather target market and plus uh, the strategy that we can follow or rather planned set of tactics that we can follow to distribute our products and services to our intended or target market is called as the entrance strategy. Well, here, in this particular lecture, we will discuss three such strategies that, as a basic, we can follow. They are timing of our entrance, the mode or are the methods that we are entering to the market, and finally, the selection criteria of our intended market. The first one is timing of entry. Well, time is a really, really important factor that we need to consider when we enter to the market. When discussing about timing, there are two types of entrants based on timing, which are early entrants and late entrants. So these two entrance types has its own advantages as well as disadvantages. We will discuss one by one uh, in future slides. The first one is early entrance or rather first movers in the particular market. Being a first mover brings its own risks and rewards to the particular entrance because being a first mover could be sometimes really disastrous, sometimes really risky. But on the other hand, same gravity involved in the risk and the disastrous situation multiplies and comes with the rewards if that particular first entrance becomes successful. Because being the first entrance, you can have the power of setting the monopoly status as well as you can have the full freedom of setting the rules of the game that you are going to play in that market. Hence, the late comers or the late entrants most of the time has to play with the rules, with the trends that you have created in that market. With that, we can move on to the advantages of involving in being first entrants. Obviously, as I mentioned, these first entrants have the ability of setting the monopoly, setting the rules of the game, setting the trends in the game, and hence they have the possibility of being the technological leadership or getting the technological leadership in that market, plus creating or enhancing the brand and brand loyalty in the particular market, plus they have the privilege of selecting the best chunk or best portion 
from the marker to play. And the worst case scenario, they have the possibility or ability or freedom of setting the barriers towards latecomers. Hence, being first entrance has tremendous advantages or rather awards or rewards if built with it. Every movement has its own disadvantages as well. So when it comes to first entrance, there are plenty of disadvantages uh, binded with it. The first one is this is really, really costly movement. Being the pioneer in the particular market of being the first mover, you should have a really, really big amount of money, R&D investment, technical know-how, marketing know-how, solid background of the company in order to be in the first mover in that market. And the first case in our sometimes the entire risk of becoming the first mover could be in vain. In that case, it becomes total a failure. As well as sometimes innovators could produce some of the products which are really primitive and will not sustain for, uh, for a longer period of time till everything is recovered as well as being this rapid technological evolvement or movement changes more uh, this allows a lot to follow and take place in the market so this becomes really really risky uh, when, uh, under the point of first entrance then we can discuss on the second part which is about the late entrance as the name implies, these are the people who wait and watch what are the things done by first movers, identify the failures they do, they address them and pick in the market where first movers are fail, failed uh, to capture. Hence, these people have the opportunity of grabbing the potential that they, the first movers couldn't catch, as well as most of the time, these uh, late entrants have to play according to the rules set by the first movers. Hence, is sometimes they find it difficult to compete effectively with the first movers. With that note, we can come to the advantages involving in the, in the first move, the second movers or late entrants. Obviously, the R and D costs are really really low because somebody else, being the first mover, has already invented research on the particular thing so they have to simply imitate or rather follow what they have done and by the time when the second entrants come to the market the first movers has paid a lot of effort in order to set the trend set the give the message to the community or other people on the particular thing that they are going to sell hence the slate entrance need not to pay much attention, need not to invest a lot on the marketing on in, no, educating people on the things that they are pr providing. Hence, they can invest on the money that they have saved of this saved from this unnecessary marketing uh, and they can reduce their product prices and they can uh, capture new markets. And of course, they can identify what are the niche markets that the first movers couldn't approach properly and where first movers made mistakes and they can rectify them and they can capture new markets uh, which comes as the advantage of being a late entrance. However, uh, these late entrants may have to follow the rules and the uh, trends set by the first movers, hence it's become tedious to completely fight against the first movers unless you have a proper financial and marketing background to compete with them. With that note, we can move on to the second criteria or the strategy of uh, entering to the markets that is called entrance mode. There are mainly two types of modes which are intermediate as well as mergers or acquisitions. When it comes to intermediate, there are three very famous categories involving in intermediate uh, category where licensing, franchising and joint ventures.
under intermediate subcategory, the first subcategory means licensing. The licensing is a mode which is involving with patents and uh, technological know-how uh, that they are using to uh, make businesses. So there are two parties involving here, the licensor who owns a patent and, and the licensee who is willing to use uh, the, lice, uh, the patent or, or rights or other rights of the, from the licenses. Uh, under uh, under a particular payment. For example, uh, we, we, we buy most of the times uh, we use uh, operation systems in our machines like Windows, like sometimes some, some software from uh, Oracle, IBM. So what happens is for using such uh, products in order to make our own products and make, our, make money, from our business, we have to use their licenses and we have to pay a monthly payment or rather annual payment uh, to use that particular thing on, uh, on, uh, for our business. So simply that is uh, become licensor, the, for example, Windows and licensee, for example, us, our organization who are using their uh, Windows uh, patent. So with that example, we can come to uh, the, uh, the, the rights that a licensee gets is the right of using the patent. And of course, uh, as, a, as, a, as a support, they get technical advice and assistance, marketing advice and assistance. But unfortunately, what happens is when the licensee starts learning on the product, then the, the sustainability of the license won't be there. Uh, as well as uh, uh, other than the marketing advisors, they also get the opportunity of using the trademarks of the particular license as well. So when discussing about the advantages, of course, this is a very, very good uh, way to start running operations uh, because uh, this opens uh, the avenue of uh, or, or opening uh, new businesses in foreign markets uh, with low risk manufacturing, uh, creating low risk manufacturing relationships. Because what you have to do is you have to uh, you have to lease or you have to uh, allow your license to use by other parties in other territory or other countries so that you can easily set up the business. And as well as because somebody else requesting your patent rights to use and make the business, which means and you also want to send your, sell your, uh, or rather rent your patents rights uh, to earn money. So both the parties have common intention of earning profits or earning money. Hence, this becomes very successful. However, as I mentioned earlier, really, really difficult to find a uh, participation, good participation for this thing because when you're entering with a kind of, uh, with a engage, business engagement with a patent or other license, there's a huge pro legal process has to be abided by the both companies in order to protect the license or patent rights, copyrights. Plus, uh, there's a great chance that the licensee learns about the software or uh, the uh, license product that they are offering, and there's a higher chance they reproduce their own version by the licensee, hence sustainability of the license would be really, really short. The next intermediate subcategory is franchising. Of course, we have seen so many franchising businesses in our, uh, around us, uh, starting from uh, like uh, 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 the, uh, most of the uh, Cola, like Pepsi, Coca-Cola, as well as some chains like McDonald's, Burger King, Pizza Hut, they all come under different segments in franchising. When uh, the first mode is uh, product as well as trade name franchising, of course, under this, what they are doing is uh, the suppliers make contracts in order to use their products uh, by the dealers uh, as well as their trade name uh, to sell the products like, like uh, Coca-Cola, like Pepsi. So they, the Coca-Cola mother company, they send, they sell their original product, they sell their product and the trade name uh, through the uh, dealers. That's one one photo, one part of the uh, one segment of franchising. The second segment is package franchising, where in under this scenario, the franchisor allow franchisee to use their uh, the franchise package consensus in the products, trademarks copyrights, 
designs, patent rights, trade secrets, know-how, and many other things in order to establish a business in their own territory. So if you get McDonald's, so it's not just selling another, uh, yet another burger, it's whole uh, uh, food chain in all in the ma ma McDonald's in each and every con uh, most of the con uh, in their own countries uh, uh, cultural uh, combinations as well. So it's a complete package comes. So with their staffs, their know-how, their equipments, their t uh, tactics used by under this packaging franchising. So when it comes to franchising, there are a lot of advantages in all link of, uh, for example, freedom of employment because this is a proven product or trademark. Hence, it's really easy to set up a business and to sell, start selling because you don't need to pay a lot of uh, advertising or marketing to establish the brand because this is a proven brand or proven trademark. So hence, the uh, failing risk is really, really low as well as the, the, the cost of entry is really low because this is an established business. However, finding a competent franchisee is really difficult because uh, when you are setting a franchise uh, chain, uh, perhaps it, most of the time it's only the very huge uh, royalty uh, in order to show them their financial strength in order to run this business. Plus, uh, sometimes uh, really, uh, the cost of creating uh, the, uh, the market or uh, the uh, unique uh, products is really difficult because uh, sometimes some cultures doesn't want accept uh, the original uh, products or services offered by the franchise chain. Hence, uh, come on, coming up with a unique uh, product or service to the particular territory would be really difficult. Plus, uh, sometimes these franchises are used in uh, different countries, perhaps origination from Europe or uh, Western side of the world and used in the Eastern side of the world. So in the used country, uh, there could be some incidents, especially in Sri Lanka and India reported uh, some of the uh, South Asian in some of the famous uh, franchise uh, chains uh, with their little food. So if something happened, uh, to the particular brand in a different country, if it's a damage, it would be affect to entire uh, brand in all the countries, which is not good for the franchiser. Hence, it's a real risk of um, uh, damaging companies' uh, reputation in the international segmentation segment. The, the next sub uh, section of uh, entrance mode uh, is uh, called joint ventures. Well. A joint venture is a, is a in business engagement um, established between two or more parties in order to share the risk, common risk of entering foreign territories. Because this is one of the most common strategy when entering to foreign or unknown territories. Because uh, perhaps you have business uh, technical knowledge, marketing knowledge, plus financial background. But when you want to enter, for example, a uh, territory like African territory, you should have a strong part in that particular seg uh, business seg segment or other territory to establish a proper business there because their cultures, their way of doing business completely may be different. So, it's, so it should be really risky of investing such a big money in such a uh, unknown territory. Hence, Joining up, up with, uh, or rather merging up uh, with, joining up with uh, t uh, another counterparty, uh, another party in that new segment would be really supportive for establishing good business, uh, less risky business in foreign territories. So this is uh, why people love these joint ventures because it's all about sharing risk between parties who are investing on the business. And of course, it's really easy to uh, helpful for uh, raising financial uh, strength you want. Plus, as a good way of uh, entering some uh, unknown countries and unknown territories. However, uh, the partners who are involving this uh, venture uh, scenario may not have full control of the management. Sometimes so there would be uh, fighting or rather the, uh, mismatches when decision making, which is not good. Plus, even though we say that it's a good way of uh, raising funds, raising capital, Sometimes your counter partner won't have a, a proper a solid financial background to raise the capital, initial capital required. As well as 
when you are doing the business partner may have their own views because most of the time partners are coming from two different cultures two different country segments which means they have their own thought plan thought process hence this would come as a collision when making a decision in the business but there are most of the time we have seen a lot of successful such engagements one is virgin mobile was on ericsson's really good uh, joint venture um, the next segment is uh, the then next more, uh, more category of uh, entry mode r uh, is a uh, merging or acquisition the, there are two very thin lines between mergers and acquisitions the merger is a uh, one company selects another company and uh, join uh, with that organization or other uh, merge with the other organization the second one is uh, a one company can completely purchase another company uh, which acquires its ownership and control there are very few, uh, very famous industrial ex examples under this category the one famous one was uh, uh, facebook acquires uh, Facet uh, and the Skype was acquired by uh, Windows, uh, and uh, the Nokia and Siemens this kind of a merger uh, scenario uh, when they work together. Well, merger and acquisition has its own advantages and disadvantages. Well, when it comes to advantage, it's really less time consuming uh, and very easy to acquire an organization and start a business. And really easy to acquire a business and ready, cut the competition very easily. And also, uh, this is really less risky because uh, some most of the time you are buying, you are acquiring, or you are merging with the established organization, established brand. So it's a very uh, less risky scenario compared to you are completely entering to blue ocean rather green field. However, this merger and acquisition has its own disadvantages. The first thing is. Acquiring a firm is a really complex thing. It involves legal, uh, regulations, uh, bankers, uh, all these parties involving in this thing and really difficult to come to a common ground. Secondly, we, when you're acquiring an organization, you are not just acquiring assets in the organization, you are acquiring the labor and their problems to your organization as well, so which is really a hectic task uh, to perform. So, so far we have discussed two uh, entrance strategies. The one is uh, try me, whether it's a late entrance or uh, uh, early entrance. Second, we have discussed about the entry modes, whether it's a licensing, franchising, joint ventures, and mergers and acquisitions. The final strategy we are discussing today is market selection. Now, when entering into a, a new business, especially in a different uh, territory, Selecting the proper market is really, really essential. There are a few criteria that we can uh, use to choose the best market that you want. They are named in culture, economy, geography, and public administration. Sometimes, uh, as you know, uh, the cultural background of different communities, different countries are really, really different. So, if you plan to start a new business uh, where that particular country is not uh, willing to accept, for example, you are willing to um, open a food chain which is really uh, based on meat products. And if there's a country or other community which uh, which they are really hate on meat, uh, they think about animal rights and uh, those stuff, uh, that kind of cultural uh, phenomena. In that case, your entire business would be at a risk of failing because they are, your, you don't have a literary uh, a proper customer base to uh, survive. Second is economic. Just imagine you are planning to set up a business targeting high-end uh, consumers. However, in the particular market you are planning to deploy this product or service, may not have enough purchasing power, perhaps even to buy their basic needs. 
So in such a scenario, if you plan to invest such thing in such a market, would be really really failure. Thirdly, the geographical uh, background of the territory that you are going to play. For example, a very simple example that if you are planning to uh, open a, a water-based gaming uh, uh, park uh, in a desert area, won't be that much successful because you don't have enough resources to run uh, the uh, implement your idea around the business because uh, uh, it's it, this is lack of uh, lack of uh, water resource something like that and finally public administration of a particular country really really comes as a hectic because every country has its own governance body uh, which go they, they govern the uh, uh, rules or rather they are the people who set the rules of the market sometimes because they would uh, be based on their rules sometimes you won't be able to bring out a lot of uh, radio devices to into the country which is really a security would be a security issue so there are so many such scenarios happen so that particular countries uh, that they are willing to enter should you should better check on the uh, regulatory uh, aspect of that uh, that country whether they accept the thing that are, uh, the, 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 the business that they are going to establish plan to establish in the particular organization so in this particular lecture, we have discussed one of the main um, aspect in innovation management that is selecting uh, uh, proper market or market selection strategies. There we have discussed three main strategies, that is uh, timing of entrance, mode of entrance, and the market selection. This is, uh, I hope uh, you have learned uh, something uh, out of this particular lesson. If you learn something, please like and share. And if you want to get alerts on latest videos that we are going to upload, please subscribe to the channel if you haven't done yet. Until we meet again, have a great time. Thank you.